Those of us modelling the steel industry in the UK between the 1970s and 2000s are lucky enough that Acuriscale have recently released a PTA, later JUA, iron ore tipler wagon, and a very special model it is too. I was very excited when this first got announced, um, pre-ordered myself a set in the uh, earlier livery, which is grey and orange. The model, as released by Acuriscale, is suitable for 1980s Ravenscraig wagons, uh, these tiplers were also used to serve Consit Steelworks until it closed, um, and Thlanwern Steelworks in South Wales, as well as Ravenscraig. Similar but very different designs were used to serve Scunthorpe, uh, where they still run today, uh, running between Immingham and the town's steelworks. In this video, we're going to look at improving these wagons slightly. Uh, in my mind the only real downside to them is that they're far too clean as they come out of the box so we're going to use a variety of techniques to make them grubby, make them look like they've been in traffic for a while. Um, as with all wagons associated with heavy industry these got of things got absolutely filthy so let's see how we get on. Right then so first things first let's get started by weathering the insides of these wagons. Um, as they come from a curious scale they're a nice shiny grey colour Having had one load of ore in, that would not have been the case. Um, so after their first journey, they need weathering. Turning these wagons at the unloading point would have involved the ore scraping along the sides of wagons, making sure that everything got absolutely covered. So we're going to be using an airbrush today. You'll see I've parked all four wagons that are in the uh, spray booth at the moment adjacent to one another. This is just to minimise the amount of paint that gets on the outside, so we need to clean anything up in the event of any overspray. Uh, I'm going to be using uh, cheap and cheerful airbrush, one of the eBay sort of £15 specials. Um, and inside uh, that, I've got some thinned down Tamiya flat brown paint, which is XF10, um, roughly a 50 50 mix of brown to Tamiya um, acrylic thinners. Um, so, without further ado, let's fire up the spray booth. It's important to make sure we are in a uh, well ventilated space. Uh, and let's get spraying. As we progress, you'll see I'm, uh, I'm not covering the wagon in paint, I'm building up layers gradually. Uh, one of the joys of the Den Airbrush is that, and it always looks better, I think, for the insides of wagons to be carrying on that way. Obviously, I'm getting a fair bit on the, uh, on the top of the sides, um, not particularly worried about that. That needs to be painted the same colour as the inside, I think. Um, looking at pictures of the tops of these wagons, that seemed to be the, the general weathering pat pattern. So we'll just crack on and do the sides now.
I think I'm pretty happy with that. You can still see the original grey and orange paint around the top lip of the wagon. Um, the insides, you can still tell there's some grey underneath. It's not completely opaque with the brown colour, which is the main advantage of using the airbrush over using a brush. I uh, wouldn't be able to get that effect, and it would obviously have taken a lot longer using a brush. Um, so what we're going to do now is start moving on and adding some extra colour into this just to provide a bit of variety. Okay, so now we want to add a bit of uh, variety. The brown looks miles better than the original shiny grey did. Um, still just a bit plain, I think. Um, a bit lacking in texture or anything like that. Um, so what I'm going to use is a small amount of, um, using Tamir acrylic again, XF84, which is a paint called Dark Iron. It does have a slight metallic content in it, um, so I don't know how well it's going to airbrush, but I think it's about the right colour. So I'm going to fire up the spray booth again and get going. So I think that looks miles better than it did before. Um, as you can see, I've not gone for overall coverage on these, just a slight covering so you can tell there's something breaking up the brown. It's not immediately apparent what that is. Uh, the iron colour actually looks brilliant on there. It's It's got slight metallic elements so it's going to leave a tiny bit of shine. Uh, and the important thing is there's still some patches of brown to represent sort of fresher ore deposits and, and rust from surface contact still on there. Um, concentrate quite a lot of the dark colour on the on the bottom of the wagons. I'm uh, really pleased with how that's looking. Uh, anything over and above this, I think we'll pick up at the end with some weathering powder, just add a little bit of variety into certain elements of these wagons. Um, but as a, as a bulking exercise, I think I'm really pleased with that. Okay, so we've come away from the spray booth now, uh, walked over to the workbench, uh, excuse all the stuff in the background, other projects going on, a uh, bit of a mess, but we can still do plenty of work and achieve what we need to do. So for this stage of the weathering, I want to get a representation of the ingrain dirt. There's a lot of body side uh, furniture on these wagons, um, lots of ribs and the like. So we can get some dirt built up into all the corners on those. The way we're going to do that is by brushing on a wash across the uh, body side. I'm going to use one I made earlier, but it's a sort of general brown, sludgy, don't really know what else you can call it, colour. Um, fairly thin, mix of uh, various Tahamia paints, browns and blacks, to create something that looks vaguely right. Um, I'm going to use a fairly large brush, just brush it on over each body panel, and then we're going to take it off again using a mixture of kitchen roll and cotton buds. So I'm going to uh, crack on with this. Um, I'm only going to show you one wagon, clearly tend to do. It's going to become a bit repetitive, uh, especially across both sides. So we'll get started and uh, see how we go. Hopefully it's fairly evident that um, I'm working as quickly as I can. Uh, one of the benefits of using a big brush is you can get a fairly decent amount of paint into the brush and you don't have to take visits back to the paint pot too often. Try not to apply it too thickly, um, but relatively evenly across each panel. Um, so before we go too far, about halfway down the wagon now, I'm gonna grab a bit of old kitchen roll and just wipe vertically down each panel uh, just to take the worst of the paint off, just saves on the number of cotton buds we need to use later on, makes life a little bit easier. Um, very, very rough at this stage, literally just trying to take off the worst from the centre of the panels. Uh, we're going to revisit these again later uh, with the airbrush, just to uh, give them a final dirty coat. 
So having done half a wagon, I cleaned it back up. I'm just going to crack on and do the rest. Again, working really quickly and roughly. So as you've already seen, most of this is going to come back off again. So overall accuracy isn't over, isn't particularly important. Uh, I am going to be careful around the step ladder at the end. It's quite a fragile moulding. Uh, what I don't want is for the wagon to be absolutely filthy behind that and then fairly clean the rest of it. So I'm just going to leave that area there for now and pick that up with the airbrush. But again, before it has a chance to dry, my old bit of kitchen roll, and I'm just taking everything off vertically, drawing down. So what you can see now is something where we've got dirty patches all the way around the outside of each panel. Uh, it's already starting to look a bit like ingrained. Uh, it's not particularly convincing at the moment. So I'm gonna work through it with a cotton bud. Uh, this takes a while, so I'm, I'm gonna pop it on fast forward. So as we uh, get started cleaning, uh, you can see I'm using some Tamiya thinners, standard cotton bud available from anywhere. Um, sticking in your ear or doing what else you do. Obviously, we like to use them for painting. Just going to take any excess thinners off using a bit of towel, uh, just so it's not completely soaking. And then I'm going to start working each panel vertically using this. Uh, be very careful around factory printed decals. Sometimes they can be really resilient. Sometimes they're completely opposite. I don't want to take these off, so I'm going to try and avoid contact with them as much as possible. Um, making sure that they remain legible. So as you can see, this is coming up with a far more realistic finish for ingrained dirt around each of these stanchion points. Using the towel, you really are taking a big sweep through the middle and leaving a towel-shaped or a finger-shaped gap around each side. Using the cotton buds, you're able to chisel right in far more convincingly. Um, yeah, much better finish. So I'll just carry on working through. Again, anything left on there doesn't matter too much. Um, this isn't perfection, this isn't the final coat. As I said earlier, we're going to revisit every panel with the airbrush and give it a general overall coat to make it much dirtier than this. I'm leaving it like this is purely to capture the built up dirt in each corner of each of these panels. I'm just going to wipe across the top beam. Not particularly convinced with the way that's paint sitting on there as it's been left. Um, again, that will get sprayed with an extra layer of dirt on it. So we'll just keep on powering through. If your cotton bud gets too dirty, you just dip another one in some thinners or the other end and uh, crack on. So as we come towards the end of this, interesting little dirty bits, details to pick up. Hopefully you can see now, we've got quite a convincing looking side panel in a very clean state. Um, certainly something that provides a little bit of a variety as a bed for the weathering uh, before we carry on with the airbrush in a bit. So, Time to have a look at the ends now. I'm just going to switch the uh, switch the wagon around, grab some more paint, and basically do the same. Okay, so cracking on with the ends, exactly the same process as before. Again, same brush, same colour, just painting on. Um, notice I'm painting horizontally. Obviously, we're going to take all this paint off, so it doesn't really matter which way the uh, brush streaks go. The main important thing is just to cover every every single area. Um, Doing the same on the other end. This is obviously the end wagon with the tail light, just an added little complication. So we want to make sure we don't obscure that because it's a working part on these rather nice models. Um, but it probably shouldn't be as immaculately white as it is. Slightly dirty, but bear in mind it's a, a separate part to the wagon, um, so it wouldn't be filthy because it's getting picked up by workers all the time. That's come up rather nicely, just purely by accident, just touching it. With a brush and then just rub it off with my finger. Um, it just looks slightly less plasticky than it did before. What we've got now then is two ends. Both look pretty terrible at the moment. So I'm going to grab the cotton bud again. A bit of thinners. Dry it off as much as possible. 
I'm just going to work through each of these slots, um, twisting the cotton bud as I go, which will hopefully give it a vertical or the look of vertical dirt. Um, obviously, dirt that's been washed down the front or the end of the wagon by the rain um, having laid on there. It's a bit tricky just because of the width between the different end strengthening plates. Um, but that's really exactly what I was looking to achieve, which is a look where there's some dirt sitting underneath those strengthening plates, some dirt sitting on top, but the bulk of it is reasonably clean. Um, hopefully it's evident from the quality of the video as well. This is taking some of the edge off the rather bright orange ends, um, which should help overall with the realism stakes. So I should do the same at the other end. On the grey, it's not so evident as to what's what. The ends of these wagons seem to get pretty grubby and never really get cleaned. So being fairly quick with this, not worrying too much because I'm going to give it a fairly good blast with the airbrush before we uh, before we finish, just to put some more brown iron ore dust onto the onto the wagon. So I think I'm happy with that. I've only done one side, two ends. Um, but I think that's looking miles better and that's a really good base for future weathering. So now it's time to move on to the next stage. Uh, here's a wagon, one of ten. Uh, it's come off the workbench having been brush painted um, and then using thinners to take it back down as we showed earlier. Now back on the spray booth again, uh, I've got the airbrush loaded up with the same sort of sludgy brown colour of paint that we used for painting the body sides. Um, now intending to cover off the underframe. Now these wagons were disc braked, so unlike a lot of my stuff, um, you actually want a bit of brown into the mix to represent the brake dust. That sludgy browny grey colour I think is just about ideal, and then we'll, uh, we'll add some more texture up on top of that once that's on as a base coat. And these are quite an interesting shape of wagon, they've got very, un very exposed underframes, um, as well as the bogies being, being quite uh, open. So we're going to cover this from a couple of different angles, make sure we cover off all the areas that uh, you'll see from a low angle shot. One thing you'll notice is that I am not bothering with the wheels. My intention is to replace these wheels with uh, some new ones that have got disc brakes on them as per the prototype. Um, that's probably the only thing I'll do to these wagons before uh, putting them into service, otherwise they're absolutely brilliant and representative of the prototype. So I'm going to uh, crack the um, extract a box on it again, uh, make sure we don't uh, poison ourselves with paint fumes and uh, get spraying. Okay, so hopefully that has uh, covered that as a base layer. Um, I'm sure you agree with me. I think that's looking much more convincing than it did when it started out from the box. Um, you still see some of the base level of colours, but it's clear it's pretty filthy and has been in traffic for a while. So uh, we'll come back, um, add a few extra shades into that, um, see how things are looking a bit further down the line. Okay, and finally for the underframe, I'm just going to put over a mix of black a tiny bit of brown and uh, dark grey, uh, sort of grimy blacky colour. Literally very quick blast from the airbrush across the bogies and some of the underframe components just to provide a bit of variety in colour, break up that sole um, brownie colour. All right, the uh, spray booth again and get going. A very small touch um, make a huge difference I think it just breaks up and provides a little variety alongside the wagon um, quite pleased with how that's looking ready to move on to the rest of the body side so we're back at the workbench again um, one of the features of these wagons after they've been in service for a bit they definitely got some uh, surface rust some of it was worse than others 
the way I'm representing this, I'll try not to go too far. A uh, bit of old sponge, dipped in some very dark grey paint, remembering that rust isn't orange or bright red like some people like to make it out to be. And we're just going to tap this over the side of the body just to give it a slightly speckled effect, um, just to give the effect of surface rusting. So I don't want it to be too bad, I don't think it's significant rust on this colour is going to scale up or scale down particularly well. Um, so I'm trying to give more of an impression than anything too accurate. Um, again, working off prototype pictures has shown me that this is what the wagons started to appear like. A lot of the time they were a lot worse than this, uh, particularly by the 80s and 90s. I don't want to get any on that flash. Um, yeah, by the 80s and 90s they were a lot worse than this. Um, I'm just going to do it lightly. I don't particularly want these to be absolutely filthy on this side, um, even though they're intended to be used in that later period. Okay, just working through the last couple. Quite handy with the Tamiya paint. I'm using NATO Black, just tapping it off on my hand or a bit of old tissue. Um, NATO Black is XF69, and what is quite handy is to shake the bottle before you open it. Um, get it so that there's plenty of paint in the side of the top of the lid and then you can work with that. So I was dipping the sponge into the rest of the uh, pot and picking up far too much paint. So this is just a bit of old sponge from the kitchen. Um, just went in and found one from the, uh, the cleaning pile. So anything will do the job. It's only going to go in the bin afterwards. There's no point in using anything too fancy. Just the last couple of panels. These seem to rust much more on the grey than they did on the orangey bits from what I've seen. Um, there, and we finally got the end of the rake. Um, you might notice on these I've left a couple of them slightly dirtier than the rest just to provide a bit of variety across the length of the train. Um, these I didn't bother taking the sludgy brown colour off on completion of the, uh, the weathering. I just applied it sparsely uh, to the whole wagon and left it to dry. Wagons within the sets, although they were in fixed formations, would have had slightly different dates for overhauls. Um, just different parts of the loading process uh, could have resulted in one getting dirtier than another. So there's nothing unrealistic in that. Um, and it does break the rake up slightly, which is uh, quite important when you've got what are essentially nine identical wagons and one that's identical apart from not having a stripe at the end. So there we've got a very subtle hint of some surface rust. I'm quite pleased with how that's looking. Um, that bit of old sponge has done the trick and can go straight in the bin. Um, and now we're going to move on to the last stage with the airbrush, which is going to be applying a overall coat of brownie colour uh, to the outside to represent the iron ore dust. So this last coat with the uh, airbrush is going to just help tie everything together hopefully. Um, as we started with, I'm just using Tamiya Thin Down Flat Brown uh, XF10, um, literally as we used for the inside, but I'm going to be applying it more sparingly over the outside of the wagon. <laughs> So just to add a bit of variety to the inside, now the outsides are more or less done. Um, I'm just using some fairly bright orange weathering powder. Um, I'm lucky enough to own a set of Pan Pastels, which are an American um, weathering powder product or pastel product. They're exceptionally good, they're not cheap at all. Um, it's an investment to get some. Uh, a lot of American railway modelers really swear by them. Um, they're great, great for application, they, they stick really well. You get some really nice effects with them and they come in some great colours. Uh, this one I'm using is just a 
sort of bright rusty colour. Um, to my eyes, it looks ideal for slightly brighter patches of ore and rust. Left inside the, uh, the wagons, uh, I haven't reached a decision on whether these wagons are going to be loaded or empty as of yet, so I'm, I'm covering the whole inside with this. It just adheres in certain places and just helps break up the overall tone, overall colour. Um, hopefully make things look really good. Um, even if these wagons are loaded, the 100 tonne capacity uh, iron ore is a very dense product. Um, if you look at pictures of these when they are loaded, it only loads approximately a third of the way up the body side, um, possibly a bit less than that. So there's still a need to cover off most of the inside with detailed weathering, even if we're going to load them. It's not like a, uh, a coal wagon or something similar where fully loaded means fully loaded. So I'm just applying these using an old brush, um, just very rough and ready, just picking up various little bits and pieces. It's all about just providing a bit of variety to the overall finish. Um, try not to make anything look too uniform. Too much of one colour, too much of another colour. That's where things start to look a bit unrealistic. So these are doing a great job. The slight metallic thick finish of the dark iron paint that I used back at the start to weather the inside of these wagons um, under the light is a little bit shinier than I wanted it to be so this is helping just to dull down the uh, the metal content of that as well uh, it's slightly like a gunmetal finish you get with that out of the uh, out of the pot so not exactly what I was looking for um, though obviously gunmetal there would be some weathering along those lines inside these wagons as well um, they were loaded through a huge great big tipper lorry or tipper uh, conveyor. Let's just finish those off. Um, I've also got a small amount of a very dark grey. I'm just going to very sparsely pop that inside as well. Feels like a good mix of colours just to help blend everything together. Just in very small quantities. Really not much needed. Not even going to put it in every single wagon. You should just notice it across the rake, hopefully. And I think I'm going to say that that rake is more or less done. So I'm really pleased with the overall picture here. Um, Akira Scale have developed a brilliantly detailed wagon, and the weathering really does make that detail pop. So I'm looking forward to getting these out into service on the layout as soon as the layout is finished. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to bring that to you in a future video and we'll take things from there. Thanks for watching.